Hey, it's Jag. I love the smell of solder in the morning. Welcome to part four of the Winter Built 2022. Uh, this year I'm building a Trinity Amps Custom Plexi 18 Watt. In the previous videos I've installed all of the chassis mounted components, the transformers. Uh, I've gotten the transformers ready for hookup. Uh, today we're going to bust out the soldering iron. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, hook up the heaters. Uh, if you recall, uh, that was supposed to happen in an earlier step before we installed the transformers. Um, I'm doing that out of sequence. Uh, it just made more sense to me to have the transformers and everything installed and then I can just get to soldering all in one shot, which is what I'm doing today. To install the heaters, we're going to need uh, a a twisted pair of uh, black and red wire. Uh, it's provided in the kit and those uh, wires will connect the heater supply from the transformer which is these green wires. So we have a, uh, a green yellow wire, a green wire with a yellow stripe. That will run off down here and go to our uh, power ground point right here. Um, we also have the two supply wires for the heater and they will go to uh, these two tabs on on the five tag. Uh, so it doesn't matter which wire goes to which, this is AC, so uh, we just need to solder one wire each to these two tabs. We will also be soldering a uh, black wire to one tab here and a red wire to the other tab and then sending that off to the tubes. We need to uh, make sure that our uh, wires are, are trimmed to an appropriate length. Uh, we don't want a whole bunch of wire hanging around loose in here, mainly because it can create noise uh, if those wires come close to a, a tube or a, a, a signal supply uh, wire. The other reason is it just looks messy. I'm going to uh, tuck these uh, heater wires down in as close as I can get them to the transformer then around this corner and uh, just uh, set a length that looks appropriate. One thing you can do with your offcut wires, keep them. You can use them for wiring other things and they suggest that in the instructions. Uh, there's no sense wasting it. That's a, that's a good six or eight inches of wire there that we can use for something. So strip off about a quarter of an inch of this wire. So the heater wires will be tucked into these corners uh, and then around to the back and this back corner and it will run along the back of the chassis only um, going out to connect when it gets near the tubes it needs to connect to. We can put the black wire on whichever tab we want and the red can go on the other. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm putting it with the black toward the front of the chassis. While we're wiring the transformer, we do not want to forget to uh, wire this center tap wire, the green wire with the yellow stripe, to our power ground over here. I'm going to run this close to the uh, uh, transformer and here, and then I'm going to just do a little right angle. And it looks like we need about that should do. These lugs are all a little bit larger. They act a little bit like a heat sink. Generally, when I'm doing something like this, I'll turn my soldering iron up to somewhere between 650 and 700 degrees. So I've just set it up to 700 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, 
that should help the solder flow a little better. You want to be careful when you're using higher temperatures on your soldering iron that you don't melt the insulating jackets on wires and, and have wires poking through that could short on something. And some uh, components are sensitive to heat as well. Um, so you want to be careful when you're using the high temperatures to get on and off the soldering points as quickly as you can. Okay, so that's that wire uh, soldered, and I'm just going to make it neat. Okay, so that's the uh, heater supply wires from the transformer wired over to the five tag uh, strip. And we've also got the uh, wires that will go off to the heaters of the tubes wired into the, the same two uh, tabs on that five tag. Now we will start with running the heater wires to the tubes. Uh, one thing you do want to remember and be careful about is these heater wires are for your output tubes and your preamp tubes, not for the rectifier. The heater for the output tubes and the preamp tubes is a 6.3 volt AC supply. Uh, the rectifier uses a 5 volt supply. It will get it from uh, this yellow wire and yellow wire with the white strip. Later, when we're wiring the pins for the rectifier, we will uh, set that uh, AC line going to the rectifier tube. So you just want to make sure you do not connect uh, your um, red and black wires uh, to the rectifier tube. Uh, the selector switch isn't going to be wired uh, wired up for a while so it doesn't need to be in the chassis right now and it was just getting in our way a bit. So I've taken that out and I'm going to set it aside. So I've run the heater wires down in the corners of the chassis uh, like I had said and I'm careful to try and get them to lie as flat as possible into those corners. It doesn't have to be perfect but you want them to be generally there. And now we're at uh, the output tube uh, V5. The heater pins on those tubes are pin uh, 2 and 7 for uh, the 6 V6s. I'm going to connect the black wire to pin 2 and the red wire to pin 7. And there is an important thing, like I said, this is an AC supply, uh, but the uh, hookup of the uh, power to them is important in terms of polarity. You want to make sure you have the same side of the transformer wires or heater supply wires going to the same pins on the tubes. That also helps uh, with, with uh, reducing hum. We will be wiring the black wire to pins 2 on the output tubes and then from there it will go to pin 9 on the preamp tubes. Uh, the red wires will go to pin 7 on the output tubes and uh, to uh, pins 4 and 5 on the preamp tubes. Obviously with pin 2 being here at the back and pin 7 being uh, being opposite almost to it up here, we need a little more of the red wire than the black wire. About there. And then that will go to pin 7. About there. Uh, so the uh, the pins on the tube sockets uh, they have two holes in them and that's really handy for wiring these heaters I usually wire the incoming wire into the bottom hole on the pin and then the one that goes out I wire it to the top that way I can put each wire in separately it's just a little easier to uh, solder that way Okay, so that's the uh, heater wires run from the uh, 
uh, transformer to the five tag strip and then from the five tag strip to uh, V5 and uh, now I have the uh, wires that will go from that 6V6 to the heaters on the next 6V6 um, so I'm going to blast through the rest of this don't really need to show much I'll probably stop uh, just to detail uh, that pin 4-5 connection of the red wire on the uh, preamp tubes the output jacks are kind of a little bit in the way as well, so I'm going to take them off. Again, they won't be wired in till close to completion of the uh, build, so they don't need to be in there right now. When you're installing the uh, heater wires to the uh, preamp tubes, um, the um, pin 4 and 5 uh, are one side of uh, the heater connection, pin 9 is the other. Uh, so you connect pin 4 and 5 together. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can, you can take the two tabs and twist them sideways and then squeeze them together. That's the, the common way to do it, uh, at least for fender amps. Uh, that can be a little bit finicky to work with. Uh, so what I do with those generally is I leave the tabs oriented the way they are. I don't twist them. And then I just put a, a, a little uh, crook in my wire and I just feed the wire through uh, pin 5 and then back uh, in through pin 4. It can also be helpful to have a small pair of uh, needle nose uh, pliers uh, so you can kind of bend these and and thread them through. This is really a tiny tight spot. Okay so I've got that threaded through I'll just solder it up. Because this is solid core wire, you want to try and avoid bending these wires as much as possible, um, especially once you have them soldered to a tab. Uh, they're most likely to break where they connect um, to that tab where the solder joint is. So uh, you want to uh, try and get your wires pre-bent into shape as much as possible and, and then install them through the tabs and solder them. Try not to move them around too much. So once you have those soldered up, you want to trim any ends poking out. Uh, don't leave anything sticking out that can short to something. Uh, and then you uh, push your wires back against the chassis and sort of route them so the, the wire runs look neat and the heaters are as far away from the tubes as you can get them. Uh, if those heater wires are close to the other wires going into the tubes, which are either feeding audio in or out of the tube, you can get some noise induced into your, um, into your signal path. And of course, I wired up uh, pins uh, 4 and 5 and uh, 9 on this preamp tube, and I haven't run the wires that need to go to the next tube, so I got some desoldering to do now. Okay, so there's all of the heaters uh, wired and tucked clean to the chassis. Uh, I think my main camera has shut down, so that's okay, because all we needed to show you was this uh, part. So this is it for the heaters. I will recap. We took the center tap of the heater winding, the green wire with the yellow stripe, and we have run that over here to our power ground point. Uh, we have then taken the heater supply wires, the 6.3 volt uh, AC lines. Uh, they are twisted together and they run over here to this five tag terminal and we have connected them to two tags on that five tag. We have also connected the black and red uh, wires to send power to the heaters to those two tabs. We've run the heater wires over here along the back of the chassis, tucked into the corner uh, at the side, and then we make this corner and we're tucked in along the chassis here. We have wired black to pin two of uh, this 6V6 and red to pin seven of the 6V6. We have also then daisy chained from there, uh, black to pin uh, two on this 6V6 and red to pin seven on this 6V6. Then from there we've daisy chained on to the 12AX7s, uh, black on pin 9 on all of them, 
and red to pin four and five on all of them. Uh, they are soldered, uh, trimmed, and tucked. I should not have to mess with these wires uh, anymore now. The last thing I'm going to do is a continuity check uh, just to make sure uh, that we have a flow, uh, a continuous flow from this tag all the way to the end of the uh, heater string. I'll put my uh, I'll put my ohm meter up here. So I'm connecting, checking the black wire now. So I've got that connected to uh, the the tab over on the the terminal strip, and I'm checking to pin 2 of V5 and we've got continuity there. Pin 2 of V4 is good. Pin 9 of V3 is good. Pin 9 of V2 we're good there. And pin 9 of V1. So the black side is uh, connected on this string all the way through and we have continuity. I will now check the red wire. Uh, so from that terminal strip to pin 7 of V5 and we're good there. Of pin 7 of V4 is good. Pin 4-5 of, um, of V3 is connected. Pin 4-5 of V2 and pin 4-5 of V1. So we're good there. Uh, so the heater string is wired we have continuity all the way through, so that should be good when we fire it up. So wiring the heaters is by a very wide margin my least favorite thing to do in an amp build. If I had an assistant or apprentice, his job would be to do heater wiring. It is just so tedious. The next closest thing to that, I guess, would be the wires going off the board to the the controls or the or the tube sockets um, but that even that doesn't come come close to being as challenging or frustrating as doing heater wires if you're going to um, burn a wire make a mistake or have something that looks ugly it will be when you do the heater wiring at any rate uh, it's done and uh, I'm actually really happy with the way it looks this turned out really well I had a few challenges but um, no uh, no mistakes, no melted wires, uh, they're all run really well and I think they look really good.